if you've ever read Atlas Shrugged, Ayn Rand basically paints a dystopian picture of America where the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. And right now we are on that trajectory, but you still have a choice on which side of the fence you land on. Today's video is kind of sobering because I'm not a doomsdayer, but I'm gonna feel like one a little bit today because there's a really big problem coming down the line, as in, in 2025, and no one is seeing it coming. You think inflation was bad during this last term? We've gotten it under control just barely with a little deflation. Well, guess what's coming next year? It's wild. So today we're talking about what's been called the great melt-up. It's about inflation and it's the debt crisis. And do you really know how many trillions of dollars the government makes in revenue and tax revenue? In this video, you're gonna find out. And then you're gonna find out what portion of interest we're paying on all of our trillions of debt. And when you start doing the math, you're like, dude, how are we not screwed? How do we fix this situation? And more importantly, there's something you need to do to prepare for what's coming. And guess what? No one's talking about it, but I am because I want you to be ready. Well, let's just start with this. Governments may prioritize inflating the economy to ease debt obligations initially, and this is going to benefit the wealthy asset holders because the reality is if you own hard assets like real estate or collectibles or jewelry or things that you can touch, those things go up in value with inflation. Most people don't own those. They literally have cash that will go down in value. They have 401ks and IRAs that will go down in value. And when I share with you the stats on just how much debt we've created and what the interest payments alone are like, it means only one outcome. So let's start with the numbers. Currently, the US national debt is $35 trillion and rising. And I want you to think about that for just a moment because the 2024 government spending was $6.3 trillion, but we only had $4.4 trillion in revenue. I want you to think about this. $4.4 trillion of revenue. It's like the government is a business and we made, I'm gonna show you in stacks. That's pretty good. We made this amount of money, but we spent this amount of money. And that difference is a $1.9 trillion deficit just for this year alone. And that's what's being tacked on to the $35 trillion. By the way, we're spending a ton of money on Social Security, Medicare, debt interest payments, and basically we don't have a whole lot of room for budget cuts. Now here's what's wild. Do you guys remember President you Bill Clinton? That was the dude that balanced the budget where the United States owned nothing. <laughs> I knew you'd be back. And you fast forward to today, we owe $35 trillion. It's the largest amount of debt we've ever held before. Now here's the scary parts. You're thinking, okay, $35 trillion in rising, what does it cost to service that? Well, in 2025, the projected annual interest payments are $1 trillion, $1 trillion. Now remember last year, we had revenue of 4.4 trillion. And if starting in 2025, we've got a trillion to cover just the interest on all that debt. That's like 20% of all of our revenue. That means that $1 for every $5 that comes in is going towards that trillion dollars of interest to our debt holders. And I wanna ask you, what does that mean for you and me? Well, it's bad news bears. Interest payments alone could consume a significant share of that tax revenue, forcing the government to print more money. And you know what happened the last time the government printed a lot of money? What happened to inflation? It went up. So what we're likely gonna see is not a little bit of inflation, but if they can't solve this over the next decade or two, we're gonna see a lot of inflation and it's gonna hurt people with fixed incomes while boosting those with inflation-proof assets. So here's what's really weird. The poor are going to get poorer and the rich that own this one asset class are about to get a whole lot richer. Before 2020, the national median home price was under $300,000. Today it's $436,000. So we've seen home prices go up $100,000. Well, if the government says, shoot, we don't have enough money to cover all of our debts, we're gonna print money to cover that. And when they print trillions of dollars, you remember what happened during the last pandemic? We saw inflation hit as high as eight or 9%. 
and then it took three years, four years to cool it all the way back down to below those levels. So you wanna stay ahead of inflation with having the right kind of assets. So the question is, what goes up in value, what goes down in value? If you can touch it, it goes up in value. For example, you can touch real estate. So when you touch it, it goes up in value. If it's a collectible, if it's painting, if it's artwork, or if it's coins, any other type of collectible, it's going to go up in value. My wife, for example, she has a monstrous crystal collection and that collection is going to go up in value. But on the other hand, most Americans, they put money in the stock market. That's a soft asset, you can't touch it. Or they put it in a 401k or an IRA. That's a soft asset, you can't touch it. Those things are going to stagnate and then ultimately go down in value. So I can tell you right now what the rich are doing. They're buying as much real estate as they possibly can. They don't want to hold on to this stuff. They want to hold on to this stuff because imagine over the next decade, if real estate went up another two or $300,000 in value, that means that your $300,000 house is now worth $600,000. And if you own 10 houses, you're going to become a multimillionaire. Did you know, for example, that you can literally just buy real estate and then you can rent it out and have someone else cover the mortgage, even make you positive cash flow, and that just by owning this over a period of years, that alone can make you a millionaire? And here's what's wild. If you own 401ks and IRAs and stocks, they're going down in value. Crisis management during the 2008 crash or during the pandemic, it just enabled the wealthier to become wealthier. Currently, the top 10% of households own nearly 70% of all the US wealth. And asset prices have grown two times faster than wages in just the last two decades. So like, what are the poor doing? They're going to college, they're getting degrees, they're working for companies, and their wage growth is slow. The wealthy are owning things like real estate, and those assets are growing twice as fast. Ultimately, this is creating the death of social mobility. Right? Rising asset prices mean that middle class struggle to even just buy homes. And family wealth becomes then the primary driver of future financial success. The impact on the younger generation is gonna be awful. They're gonna experience mental health challenges due to unrealistic meritocracy narratives. And in the real world, your higher earners without family wealth are gonna struggle even to buy a property while someone with wealthy parents can purchase real estate effortlessly. You see, the older generation benefits from asset appreciation, but might leave descendants without sustainable wealth, while the younger generation faces increasing pressure to succeed in an economy where simply the opportunities are shrinking. By the way, there's a reason why I always encourage everyone to look at entrepreneurship. Owning your own business can be hard, but it means that you leave this world of trouble and you have a greater opportunity to create the level of success you want. Even if the only business you want to get into is owning real estate, the great melt-up and the asset economy are changing how wealth is created and distributed. Awareness and being proactive in your planning, this is what's essential to protect your financial future. What you need to do is engage with investment strategies that align with those trends that stay ahead of inflation and counteract wealth inequality. In other words, get better at saving your money and put it in the game of real estate. Now, something you may not know about me is I have 2,000 real estate partners around this country that I build real estate portfolios for. And some of them literally are starting with little to no money whatsoever. If you want to partner with an expert that can help you get into the strategies where you get to hold your assets in real estate and make all that money, you may want to look at partnering with me. If you have a 401k or an IRA, if you own a home and you have equity in it, all of those are really great sources to put into real estate. And if you want to make as much money in real estate as possible, I want you to click the link below and request some free information about partnering with me because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you exactly step-by-step step what I would do if I were you to build at least a million and then a multi-million dollar net worth just by passively owning real estate through a short period of time. It doesn't take 40 years. It's something that can be done relatively quickly and with inflation coming, it's gonna happen even sooner. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, I wanna invite you to learn about partnering with me right now. Let me show you where the best markets are. Let me show you how I'm earning these extraordinary ROIs and they're only gonna get steeper because the government's gonna make some dumb decisions and you can benefit from that to protect your financial future. Click the link below, get with me right now. Let's look at possibilities. By the way, if you're kind of curious how I house hacked myself to $1.6 million with less than five grand, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how I did it in this video right here.